Wasserman Schultz threatens police chief, after exposed her sick crimes. Rep. Debbie Wasserman Schultz threatened the chief of the U.S. Capitol Police with consequences for holding equipment that she says belongs to her in order to build a criminal case against a Pakistani staffer suspected of massive cybersecurity breaches involving funneling sensitive congressional data off-site. The Florida lawmaker used her position on the committee that sets the police force's budget to press its chief to relinquish the piece of evidence Thursday in what could be considered using her authority to attempt to interfere with a criminal investigation. The Capitol Police and outside agencies are pursuing Imran A1, who has run technology for the Florida lawmaker since 2005 and was banned from the House network in February on suspicion of data breaches and theft. My understanding is that the Capitol Police is not able to confiscate members' equipment when the member is not under investigation. Wasserman Schultz said in the annual police budget hearing of the House Committee on Appropriations Legislative Branch Subcommittee. We can't return the equipment, Police Chief Matthew Arver de Rosa told the Florida Democrat. I think you're violating the rules when you conduct your business that way and you should expect that there will be consequences, Wasserman Schultz said. As one of eight members of the Committee on Appropriations Legislative Branch Subcommittee, Wasserman Schultz is in charge of the budget of the police force that is investigating her staffer and how he managed to extract so much money and information from members. Comments Rep. W. Wasserman Schultz threatened the chief of the U.S. Capitol Police with consequences for holding equipment that she says belongs to her in order to build a criminal case against a Pakistani staffer suspected of massive cybersecurity breaches involving funneling sensitive congressional data off-site. Sponsored by Rev Content. Unbelievable German World War II photo stuns Americans. Find out more. 65,325. The Florida lawmaker used her position on the committee that sets the police force's budget to press its chief to relinquish the piece of evidence Thursday, in what could be considered using her authority to attempt to interfere with a criminal investigation. The Capitol Police and outside agencies are pursuing Imran A1, who has run technology for the Florida lawmaker since 2005 and was banned from the House network in February on suspicion of data breaches and theft. My understanding is that the Capitol Police is not able to confiscate members' equipment when the member is not under investigation, Wasserman Schultz said in the annual police budget hearing of the House Committee on Appropriations Legislative Branch Subcommittee. We can't return the equipment, Police Chief Matthew Arver de Rosa told the Florida Democrat. I think you're violating the rules when you conduct your business that way and you should expect that there will be consequences, Wasserman Schultz said. As one of eight members of the Committee on Appropriations Legislative Branch Subcommittee, Wasserman Schultz is in charge of the budget of the police force that is investigating her staffer and how he managed to extract so much money and information from members. In a highly unusual exchange, the Florida lawmaker uses a hearing on the Capitol Police's annual budget to spend three minutes repeatedly trying to extract a promise from the chief that he will return a piece of evidence being used to build an active case. If a member loses equipment and it is found by your staff and identified as that member's equipment and the member is not associated with any case, it is supposed to be returned. Yes or no? She said. Police tell her it is important to an ongoing investigation, but presses for its return anyway. A federal employee with knowledge of the situation and who requested anonymity told the Daily Caller News Foundation's investigative group that as House authorities closed in on Imran Awan and his brothers, a laptop used by Imran was hidden in an unused crevice of the Rayburn House office building. Wasserman Schultz's office is in Longworth House office building, a separate structure. The laptop was later found by Capitol Police and seized because it was relevant to the criminal investigation, the source said. The investigation is examining members' data leaving the network and how Awan managed to get members to place three relatives and a friend into largely no-show positions on their payrolls, billing $4 million since 2010. The Congresswoman characterizes the evidence as belonging to her and argues that therefore it cannot be seized unless Capitol Police tell her that she personally, as opposed to her staffer, is a target of the investigation.
when the DCNF asked Wasserman Schultz Monday if it could inquire about her strong desire for the laptop, she said no, you may not. After the DCNF asked why she wouldn't want the Capitol Police to have any evidence they may need to find and punish any hackers of government information, she abruptly turned around in the middle of a stairwell and retreated back to the office from which she had come. Her spokesman, David Domirallen, then emerged to say we just don't have any comment. Though on the surface Wasserman Schultz would have been a victim of Awin's scam, she has inexplicably protected him, circumventing the network ban by retitling him as an advisor instead of technology administrator. Politico described him and his wife, Hina Alvey, as having a friendly personal relationship with both Wasserman Schultz and Representative Gregory Meeks of New York. That baffled a Democratic IT staffer, who said I can't imagine why she'd be that good of friends with a technology provider. Usually if someone does bad stuff, an office is going to distance themselves rather than incur political fallout for a mere staffer, he added. Wasserman Schultz resigned as chairman of the Democratic National Committee in 2016 after WikiLeaks published thousands of internal emails obtained by an as yet unidentified hacker. Breaking, crime boss agrees to expose Seth Rich's murder, but he's got one demand. Even criminals know that the Democrat Party is covering something up. Internet hacker and real-life Bond villain Kim.com says he has evidence that Seth Rich was behind the DNC email leak. In exchange for public testimony before the Senate, he's demanded safe passage from New Zealand to the United States and back, given that he's a wanted criminal in the U.S. Kim.com was behind the file-sharing website Megapload, which was shut down in 2012. .com is wanted by the United States government for copyright infringement and other charges. Now, the larger-than-life hacker is speaking out about the murder of Seth Rich. He claims the two were collaborating on a political project. In a statement released to his website, Kim.com explains that he had been in contact with Seth Rich since 2014. According to .com, Seth Rich contacted him to discuss the possibility of bringing the Internet Party to America. The Internet Party is a new political party created by Kim.com three years ago. It is based on a platform of Internet freedom and protecting privacy. Seth Rich said he had created voter analytical tools that would be useful to launching the Internet Party in America. The two also discussed political corruption and how to change the system from the inside. Now, Kim.com is hoping to provide evidence to investigators that Seth Rich was behind the leak. .com is clearly very serious and is willing to testify before the Senate under oath. As previously stated, Kim.com said he is willing to travel to America from New Zealand, provided he is granted safe passage and the guarantee that he would not be arrested. He claims that his lawyers have been in talks with special counsel Robert Mueller to make arrangements. .com made his fortune as an information broker, and he has dirt on just about anyone who is anyone. The Democrats must be squirming in their seats at the prospect of him testifying before Congress. .com has the power to bring down empires, and the Democrats have now crossed him. If Kim.com is refused safe passage, it will be a clear indicator that Robert Mueller is helping the Democrats with a cover-up. The hacker clearly has some very important information to share, and given his influence, Kim.com cannot be easily dismissed. What do you think about this comment below? And below, Melania just made Vatican crowd go wild after she teaches Michelle a big lesson in front of entire world. All eyes were on First Lady Melania Trump as she arrived at the Vatican, especially after Michelle Obama had just been spotted in Italy disrespecting Christian holy sites. Italians were aghast yesterday at Michelle's behavior, but today, as Melania stepped from her vehicle at the Vatican, Italians were cheering. You will be too when you see how she just restored America's dignity in Italy while teaching Michelle a big lesson she won't forget. Italians were aghast yesterday at Michelle's behavior, but today, as Melania stepped from her vehicle at the Vatican, Italians were cheering. You will be too when you see how she just restored America's dignity in Italy while teaching Michelle a big lesson she won't forget. Melania Trump stepped from her vehicle at the Vatican with the president at her side, 
wearing all black with a beautiful veil on her head as is the custom. Ivanka Trump also wore a veil, looking stunning in black as they met Pope Francis. Melania, who is Catholic, chose the more traditional Spanish-style mantilla veil. Melania was also able to show off her linguistic skills when the Pope struck up a conversation with her in Italian. Ivanka Trump also wore a veil, looking stunning in black as they met Pope Francis. Melania, who is Catholic, chose the more traditional Spanish-style mantilla veil. Melania was also able to show off her linguistic skills when the Pope struck up a conversation with her in Italian. What do you give him to eat? The Pope 